So a year ago at this time, if you had asked me who Gallagher was, I would have had uh, no idea about the company, but I would have said, um, isn't that the uh, guy who smashes watermelons for a living, the comedian? Um, or my other thought might have been the band Oasis, who in 2009 broke up because the brothers Liam and Noel Gallagher had such a passionate hate for each other that they couldn't stand to be around each other for one more second. And I actually saw an article one time that said, uh, Liam said about his brother that he'd rather eat his own poo than to be in a band with his brother again. Uh, but he didn't say poo, so. But then last year around this time, I actually discovered another Gallagher, and that's Gallagher where I work today. And um, I was surprised to, after a little bit of research, to find that um, it's one of the world's largest insurance brokerage companies, and it's a 90-year-old company, so they've been around for a really long time. They have about 26,000 employees, uh, operations in 34 different countries, and uh, they've been named one of the world's most ethical companies for about seven years in a row. So then I started wondering, is it just me? Have I been living under a rock? Or is this possibly the largest insurance brokerage that no one's ever heard of? And so we realized that um, this was actually a challenge that Gallagher had. So in my first couple weeks there, it became very apparent that Gallagher is extremely passionate about building trusted relationships with their clients. And they also translate that passion for people into their employee base as well. And we select partnerships, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment, um, to help improve communities. And Gallagher also really um, focuses on wanting employees to make their communities better as well. Uh, so there was a few different hurdles that I uncovered very early on. Uh, the first was around brand awareness. And so um, not many people knew who Gallagher was. And so we needed to figure out a way to get eyeballs on the brand and get people to at least know who we are. And when I first started at Gallagher, we had several conversations with several of our salespeople that we call producers or consultants. And we heard time and time again from those sales teams that you know, if I could just get on the short list of an RFP, or if I didn't have to spend the first 10 minutes of every meeting talking about who Gallagher is as a company, I'm sure we would win more business. And the reality is, is that's true. When they do get to that table, or they are on the short list, more times than not, we actually do get the business. So we decided that we needed to start with a brand awareness effort. And so there was a couple things that we did around that. We are a 90-year-old company, but we don't necessarily want to look it, so we opted to do a little bit of a brand refresh. And we wanted something that was a little bit more contemporary, uh, something that very quickly gave people an idea of who we are and what we do. And so you can see here the old logo versus the new logo. And people were really excited about using the new logo. And uh, some people took some liberties with how to apply the new brand. So we did have to institute a couple things. We created a brand center website where it has all of the uh, pieces that you need in order to effectively know how to use the brand and to make sure they're using the right brand pieces. And we also instituted a creative review process so that we could just make sure that people were applying the brand in the way that we intended. So the other strategic thing that we did around brand awareness as we started pushing out the new brand um, is we selected two very long-term strategic partnerships that would also help us extend that brand awareness. So we had a partnership with the Chicago Cubs and the Ricketts family, and also the Premiership Rugby League. And so there's a couple of things that, that we like about these partnerships. Uh, fundamentally, they share the same values that we do. They have a strong focus on making their communities better. Um, but with the Cubs partnership specifically, uh, while inside Wrigley Field, we do have the left bullpen door that has the Gallagher branding, and that's nice. The bigger part of our partnership actually is around the park that's right outside of Wrigley Field, which is called the Gallagher Way. And it really is becoming a staple in the Lakeview community for where people can go and gather. The nice thing for us is, well, yes, it, people walk through there as they go to Cubs games. Last year, about 700,000 people entered through the Gallagher Way to uh, go to a Cubs game. The other thing about it is that it really 
extends beyond the Cubs season. Um, they have yoga in the morning, so they have farmer's markets, they have wiggle worms for kids, and uh, a lot of other things as well. They actually had a craft beer uh, festival last, last weekend, I think. So, so that that's, allows us to make it a year-long thing that we can take advantage of. Um, and also with the Cubs specifically, they are um, very well known. They have fans worldwide, and they have a very large social media following. I think it's the largest social media following in the MLB. So those were also attractive things for us. With the Premiership Rugby League, um, this also was a little bit of a unique partnership for us. We're not just sponsoring a team. We're sponsoring the entire league, which means that our brand is all over the stadiums, all over the players' kits, um, all over the balls. And so that is something that uh, was attractive to us. The other piece, too, is that they have a huge following, right? So um, they had, I think, over 2 million people just attend the uh, events. They had over 30 million people viewing it in the UK. And about 30% of the fans that go to the games purchase uh, things from there to wear. So really, that's our brand walking around. So we really liked that piece of it, too. So then the piece became, now that we have these partnerships, which we um, launched both of them within a week of each other, so nobody really got any sleep, and it was kind of crazy. But we did see a pretty significant lift from announcing both of those partnerships. And that was really exciting for us. We saw more engagement, more views, more media coverage, things like that. But what we also wanted to make sure that we do is how do we kind of take advantage of that and springboard off of that and, and make it more meaningful and kind of sustain it. So that's um, where we kind of come to our second hurdle, which is really around our brand online. We have an extremely disjointed brand online. Um, and so that is kind of one of the things that I was uh, attracted to about coming to Gallagher, although I didn't realize necessarily the extent of, of it, which was um, certainly challenging. But Gallagher has grown not only through traditional sales techniques or boots on the ground, they've also grown significantly through merger and acquisition activity. And they've basically doubled in size in the last five years. We've had over 300 merger and acquisitions in that time. And we haven't really done a great job of once we acquire a company, fully assimilating them into the Gallagher brand. Some of them took a stab at how to apply the Gallagher brand. Some of them should be get branded as Gallagher but aren't yet. Some of them are what I call Gallagher-ish. And so that's really been a challenge for us. So we tried to figure out what are we going to do about our digital presence. So we thought we needed to start with an audit. So we did an extensive audit just to figure out what, is, what are we working with. And after that audit, we uncovered that we have about 1,400 domains, about 300 different websites that we're dealing with, over 500 social media channels. And this is when I panicked. And I was like, what did I do here? Um, and after I came out from under my desk from the fetal position and decided to roll up my sleeves and actually get started, we had to determine what the heck are we going to do about our website. Um, so when people become aware of us in that physical space, now that we've got a new brand, we're applying it in some of our partnerships and people are seeing it, naturally they're going to want to know more information about, okay, well, who is this Gallagher company? And when they come online, we need to have an experience that meets them in the middle and reflects that. And we don't necessarily have that right now. And we had so many websites, we just needed to figure out where are we even going to start. So. Of the 300 websites, we actually have about five that I would consider to be corporate websites. We have one in the US, one in Australia, one in Canada, and actually two in the UK. And all of these look and feel differently and contribute to our disjointed brand. So the second piece of it after we started looking at it is we figured this was going to be the right place to start, kind of figure out how to kind of merge all these together. But we also realized very early on that even though you had an online presence, it was severely neglected. We didn't necessarily do a good job of keeping up with the content or necessarily even caring about what content we were putting up there. People were just kind of putting stuff up there. 
And so we kind of acquired what we call a content graveyard. I also made the mistake very early on in kind of just surfing around the site to see what was out there and went to our knowledge center. And this is the actual uh, pagination from the website. So there's 140 or 74 pages of content. And on that 174th page, we have content from 2007, 2008, 2009. And uh, so there's also a huge strategy that we're having around uh, content. What's the content strategy for us? And so we've done some significant content value modeling, taking a look at all the content, looking at the website traffic, uh, its SEO value. Is it branded appropriately? Is the content in it even relevant? and making some significant re recommendations on uh, what we do with that. And so in order to kind of solve all these complex things that we're going around, this is kind of when we introduced Solstice into the, the um, project. And so we kicked off a strategy phase where we um, dove into everything about these websites and tried to figure out what exactly we wanted to do. And one of the things that we uncovered through extensive user research is that our existing customers don't actually use our website, which at first was really disheartening for me, I gotta be honest, but then it really kinda is one of the great things because the trusted relationships that our salespeople have built with their clients, they feel like they can just call them. They don't need to come to our website. And that's one of the great things about Gallagher and what makes, them, what, what makes us special, I think. And so what we realized very early on is when we were gonna build this new digital estate, we wanted it to be for people who actually aren't Gallagher customers yet. And we also determined that we didn't really need it to do a whole lot. We wanted to do five things. We just wanted it to be a place where people could come to if they uh, saw Gallagher or heard about this Gallagher company and they, all they need to do is just verify information about Gallagher, um, understand what the services and products are that we offer, verify that we do have that industry expertise, and then the only thing that they wanna do is start getting to a salesperson or a producer to start that relationship and to kick that relationship off so that they can really start having those discussions with that producer on what are those custom needs that they have that we can help them with and build that trusted relationship. And then we also wanted to provide them a little bit of information around who is this salesperson that, that we're gonna be getting them off to. Now, I'll be honest, we are in the early stages of this. We are nowhere near done. I think we're heading in a great place, but it really is a faith-based effort. And faith that we're asking the organization to really understand and buy into what we're doing. And that's been a challenge because, as I said, the digital piece wasn't necessarily a huge, a huge part of what they were focused on. And we really are trying to get them to understand that we've got the team in place to do it. So faith that we have the team. Faith that what we're gonna be building is really going to help drive the sales process. That it's gonna fill the top of the funnel with really good leads because we're gonna target them appropriately and get them as quickly as possible to the right person and faith to actually fund it because as you know, it costs a lot of money to do things like this, it's not cheap, and we don't necessarily always have a lot to show for it while we're in these early stages, so just making sure that they, they are okay with that. And so, the other piece that we've also focused a little bit on, and not a little bit, a lot of it, um, is the social element as well. So LinkedIn is our most active channel and that was confusing for people when they were trying to figure out who our brand was because there were several Gallagher company pages. Companies that we acquired had changed their logo to Gallagher, so it was really confusing. So we did some streamlining of that, folded in regions into the master brand page, uh, focused on the merger and acquisitions to make sure that they just mentioned that they were an acquisition of Gallagher, and, um, and so we've all used it for that. And then the other piece that we've used it for is around recruiting because people like working with Gallagher because they really like the people that they're working with. So we use it as a significant recruiting tool to uh, give them the experience of what it's like to work at Gallagher and what it's like to be part of the Gallagher family. So the third hurdle is, I'm sure this won't come as a surprise to anybody, but measurement. Um, how are we gonna know that this is working? 
So in the physical space with our partnerships, we need to make sure that when we're providing those VIP hospitality experiences to those um, potential customers, that we're tracking those, that we're tracking them in our CRM system, that we're making sure that we're following that through to see if that turned into something. And also, anecdotal feedback from our salespeople. Are they getting to more deals? Are they closing those deals faster? Um, those are things that we want to know. And then obviously in the digital space, we want to make sure that we're focusing on follower growth, um, engagement increases, website conversions. Are we getting people to the right salesperson? And is that converting into an actual revenue generating opportunity? So like I said, we're nowhere near done. Um, but I would say the things that have been helpful for us along the way so far are four things. So the fact that we sat down and spent time identifying what are we working with? What's the full breadth of what we have here through audits and research has been helpful for us because it's allowed us to have a full scope of where to prioritize and start our efforts. Um, it also was important to us that we had a clear view on who we are as a brand and what we want to say. Um, so that will also be incorporated into to the final um, version so that we are able to show people who we are and give them our story. And the content value modeling has been actually really critical to this because in the new version, a lot of the content that was on the site before isn't going to be on the site in the future. And sometimes those are difficult problems uh, or difficult discussions to have with people because they love their content and they want to keep it and it's precious to them, but we have rationale and data behind why we're making the decision that we are. And so that's been critical to some of those um, difficult discussions. And then the last piece is, because this is such a huge effort, nothing that, everything that we do, we have to be able to measure. And if we can't measure it, and we can't prove the value that we're creating to the organization through these significant changes, it's kind of like, what's the point? So the measurement piece that we're building in is, is also very critical. Um, so that's kind of our story at this point. I mean, obviously our story's not done, um, but if any of this resonates with you um, or you just want to commiserate and you have the, the same challenges, I'll be around all afternoon and would love to, to hear about that from you guys. Thank you.